Hi guys and welcome back to my course. In the previous video, we split our application into reasonable components. In this video, we are going to add the functionalities. Now, if you see here, there are two major functionalities. So when someone clicks here, this band color gets updated. And when someone clicks here, the functionality gets updated. If you look at our code, so if you see here, we've got two different components for the left and right part of our application. So can you guess where will you manage the state? Come on, take five seconds and think about it. Or if you need more time, pause the video, think about it, and then play the video again. All right. So if you guess that you should manage the state in this product details component, unfortunately, it was a wrong idea. So the reason being, if you handle the state here in this product detail section, how will you pass that data to your other component, which is product preview component? So right now, there was only one way you pass that data to AppJS, you update the state of AppJS, and then you pass it to product preview section. So if we had learned Redux, we could have used the global store, but we haven't learned Redux now. This is one option. So another option or a better option is managing the state in AppJS itself and just passing functions down to these child components to update the state. So let's give it a try. So what we need is whenever someone clicks on this image, our current preview image should get updated. All right, so let's create a function for this. Say so constant on color option click. Now again, we're inside the class, so we don't need to add constant or let. We can simply write the member methods or the class methods. Over here, we can update the state. So we can simply do current preview image. And to update it, we would need to know which element was clicked. So let's say we're getting position in this function. And to get the element at certain position, we can simply do product data, or it's already stored in the state. So let's fetch it from the state first. So let's say updated preview image. So this dot state dot product data. Now product data is an object. And inside that you've got this color options list. So you can simply do dot color options at position. And to get the URL, you can simply do image URL. Let's save it. And let's update our state using this value. So updated preview image. Now what we can do is we can pass this function down as props to our product details component. Say on color option click and we can pass the reference of this function. Now remember we are inside a class and this is a class method. So you have to use this keyword to access it or reference it. So coming inside product details. Now we can simply use the on click listener here. So on click and we can pass the reference of our function. So props start on color option click. Now we also need to pass some data. So if we do something like this, it will trigger the function automatically and we don't want that. So we can create an anonymous function which just returns this function call. Let's save it. And let's try printing it. So updated preview image. Let's open our console. All right, so when I click on this second one, we're getting this URL. When I click on the third one, we're getting different URL. When I click here, we're getting different URL and our image is also getting updated. All right. So this works absolutely fine. And if you're wondering why our image is automatically getting updated, 
So if you have a look here, so this product preview, we're passing the current preview image, which is coming from the state. And inside this function, we are updating the state. So that's why the set state method is called and it updates our state and which calls the render method. And this component is rendered again with the updated value. So that's why you're getting the updated images. All right, so moving on. Now, if you see, we hard coded zero here. So whenever the position was zero, we were adding the selected product image. But now what we want is to know whatever is the current selected image. So instead of this zero, we need some variable. So there are two options. One is we can add another variable here, say current preview image position, and we update that. Or what we can do is we can simply just have one state variable, say current preview image position, by default it could be zero. And whenever someone clicks on the color options, we can update this position value. So instead of this current preview image, we can simply update it with the position. So now we have this position stored in our state. So what we can do is every time we are rendering our product preview component, we can fetch the image from the product data. So from this, for that specific position, so state dot product data. Now this is an object and inside that we have color options array. So here we can do this dot state dot current preview image position dot image URL. So this will give us the URL for that specific position. So let's check it. Now when you click here, as you can see, it's still updating, but we haven't handled the scenario or case for this selected border. So we can also add another property here, say current preview image position, this dot state dot, the value from the state. So coming here now instead of zero, you can simply do props dot current preview image position. Let's save it and let's check it. So there's some error here. As you can see, we aren't getting anything. So coming back, sorry, my mistake. So we pass this data to a different component. So this needs to be passed here. Let's save it and let's try again. So now when I click here, as you can see, it's getting updated. So what's happening is whenever your user clicks on these color options, it calls the function which updates the app.js state. And when the app.js state is updated, it re-renders the entire application. Or in other words, it re-renders this uh, product preview component and product details component with the updated value. And inside these components, we've handled the cases or we've handled the data, and that's why we're getting these updated data. Now, same thing can be done for this features. So let's create a new function here. Let's say on feature item click. So again, we can get the position. For now, let's just try printing this position. So we can pass this function down to your product details component. So this dot reference and inside product details. So over here on this button, we can add an on click listener and we can reference that function. So to reference, we can simply do props dot whatever was the property name. Now we also need to pass some data, which is the position. So again, we can simply return an arrow function here, which in turn returns this function call. Let's save it and let's check it. So as you can see, when I click on heart rate, I get one. When I click on time, I get zero, which is absolutely fine. So we need to update the show heartbeat section. So to update, we can simply do this dot set state and we can update this with some value which could either be true or false. 
Now let's add some conditions to generate the updated value. So let's say updated state. Let's make it false by default. So if the position is one, that means the second element was clicked, which is a heartbeat. So updated state can be turned to true. And we can use this updated value here. Let's save it and let's check our code. So when I click here, as you can see, nothing happens. And it's giving us an error invalid property class. So a mistake here, let's search for class. Our product preview, JS16. So over here, now this will be class name. Also, a very important or very interesting thing to notice here. So as you can see, I'm using both. I'm using the CSS modules as well as the normal CSS here. So this classes or something is the CSS module and it's coming from this module file. Whereas the class names inside these double codes are coming from the global styles, which is being rendered by the font awesome script. So this is another important and interesting thing to keep in mind. All right, so coming back here, now we also need to handle it. So over here, we just made it zero. So what we can do is we can pass the updated value. Say show heartbeat section. So we can pass that value here. Say this dot state dot show heartbeat section. And based on this, if props dot show heartbeat section, then add that array or else don't. So let's check it here. So when I click here, both are getting updated. So what we can do is we can add another condition here. So if position is one and and show and props dot show heartbeat only then add this class. So when I click here, as you can see, it's getting updated, but when I click here, it's not. So we can handle this scenario as well. So else if position is zero and props dot show heartbeat section is false, then add this class. So classes dot selected feature item. So when I click here, as you can see, it's getting updated. Or a better word would be instead of storing true false here, if you just store current selected feature, and this could hold the position of the selected feature. And whenever a feature is clicked, we can update this value by the latest or the position of whatever feature was clicked. So over here, we'll have to update this as well, current selected feature. So coming here, now instead of writing all these complex conditions, we can simply do if position is equal to props dot current selected feature, then add this class. So now we have screwed up here. So as you can see, we don't have this state. So instead of this show heartbeat section, this needs to be current selected feature. Let's search for all the occurrences of current sorry let's search for this show heartbeat section so as you can see we just have two occurrences so we can replace this with current selected feature and we can handle it inside the products preview component so instead of checking true false here we can put a condition if this is one now again this is not the best use case but 
this is the best we got right now because we don't have any IDs to compare. So we're just comparing it with position. All right, so when I click here, as you can see, it gets updated and everything else is working perfectly fine now. And that's all. I hope this gave you a better understanding of how to approach or how to start or how to create React applications, how to split the application into components, how to handle the functionality, where to handle the state. But if you have any doubts or queries, feel free to drop a comment below or reach out to me on Twitter. I'll add my Twitter handle in the description below. See you in the next video. Bye and take care.